For many Americans, the dream of owning a home has slowly become a pipe dream. The national average home price has skyrocketed to over $340,000. That's according to the December 2023 figures from Zillow. Most Americans still holding on to that dream have started hunting for places it can still be achieved without living near a toxic waste dump or in a city that's so damaged and dangerous that it can be used as the backdrop for the next installment of Mad Max. Today we look at places that might not be the best, but do have homes for under $100,000. Obviously, these aren't beachfront cities in Hawaii or charming towns in New England. That isn't where you find $100,000 homes. You want a cheap home, you're gonna have to deal with some problems. These are cities, not small towns. If you wanna see a small town series like this, let me know in the comment section below. We could probably do about four of them. Break it down by region or something like that. All right, today on World According to Briggs, we look at cities with plenty of homes for under $100,000. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Wichita, Kansas. Wichita is a good mix of urban convenience and rural charm, making it an appealing place to live for those who appreciate, you know, like the amenities of a city and the tranquility of the countryside. Life in Wichita is characterized by friendly communities, which, you know, Kansas is kind of known for that, and tons of outdoor activities, thanks to numerous parks, museums, and entertainment options, which is more than you'd expect from a flyover state. You'd think the biggest attraction would be something like the world's largest ball of earwax or the like. No, they're actually a legit city with a lot to do. The city's affordability, particularly in real estate, is attributed to a variety of factors. Economically, Wichita benefits from a good mixed economy with strong sectors in manufacturing, healthcare, and education, which stabilizes the job market without drastically inflating the housing market. Additionally, the city's strategic location, it's in the middle of the country, contributes to low transportation and land costs which in turn keeps home prices down compared to other metro areas. The combination of a decent housing market and low cost of living and affordable housing make Wichita a great place for families, young professionals, and retirees. Now, it is the Midwest. And in case you don't know, which I know a lot of people from the coast don't understand this, the Midwest, even in the lower part of the Midwest, can get cold during the winter. So a lot of retirees don't like that. Just keep that in mind in case you're trying to bypass Florida as a retirement place. Wonderful state, great people. It just gets some cold winters. It's affordable. Wichita and all of Kansas offers a good quality of life and it's financially attainable. Currently, their total active listings is 1,094 in Wichita. This is according to Zillow. Active listings under $100,000 is 71. In 2023, the percentage of listings under $100,000 was almost 7%. Number nine, Cincinnati. Ohio is becoming a place where more and more remote workers are moving to, Cincinnati being one of the better options in Ohio. Since he's a place where you have more than enough things to do, taking a Red Sox game, go see a Bengals game, explore the city's beautiful parks, museums, and they've got a pretty decent zoo. And stop typing. If you're about to correct me, the Cincinnati baseball team is the Reds, not the Red Sox. That's in Boston. Who is leaving the comment? One of the best things about living in Cincinnati is how affordable it is to live there, especially when it comes to real estate. The reason why houses are so affordable in Cincinnati compared to other big cities is the cost of living is lower across the board here. This means things like groceries, transportation, and healthcare don't cost as much as you'll find in other cities the same size. I mean, that aren't in Mississippi. It doesn't take that much to live comfortably in Cincinnati. This city has a lot of homes available, so there's more choices for buyers, which helps keep the price down. This makes it easier for families to find a good home without spending a fortune, making Cincinnati a great place to live and affordable. Currently, there are 1,176 listings. Active listings under $100,000 is 72. The average amount of listings, 100,000 or below, all of 2023, was 6.72%. Number 8, Louisville, Kentucky. Just down the Ohio River from Cincinnati, you have Louisville, Kentucky. This is not a bad place to live, despite a lot of the stereotypes you get with anything that comes from Kentucky. This is a great town with plenty of fun things to do, great food, and Kentucky's kind of known for being friendly. You know, got, well, still know him, but he said in most of the country, good people greet you with a good handshake and a smile. In Kentucky, they greet you with a drink. 
which in my experience is not just a stereotype. You can go to Louisville and have a pretty good time and not empty your wallet. One of the best parts, the housing here is super affordable. This means that instead of spending a ton of money on a tiny apartment like you would in some other cities, you can get a much bigger place for the same price or even less. Why is Louisville so affordable? Well, this city isn't as crowded as other places like obviously New York, Los Angeles, Nashville, Memphis. And so that helps keep the cost of living lower, including real estate. They have plenty of land to go around so people aren't fighting for the same tiny spot. I like the downtown here. It's one of the cleaner downtowns you'll run into in the United States. It's been a, quite a few years since I spent like more than a couple days in Louisville, but I'm sure their bad parts are just as bad as they always were. I think it was two years ago I had a meeting in the Kentucky Home Life Building, I think it's called. They have this little park right across the way from some old courthouse or something. I just sat there and watched people walk by for the longest time. They just always seem in a good mood. Not a whole bunch of homeless people. Not a bunch of graffiti. Sure, you could find that other places. I just didn't see it the one time I went there a couple years ago. But Louisville is a really nice city and you should move there. And you should because it's nice and it's affordable. The total active listings right now is 1,896. The active listings under $100,000 is 165. And the percentage of listings under 100,000 in 2023 averaged 8.70% of the listings. Number seven, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Living in Pittsburgh is like being in a giant clubhouse where everybody knows each other and the houses don't cost an arm and a leg or even an arm and your Steelers season tickets. Why is it so affordable, you ask? Well, Pittsburgh is like that friend who's cool but doesn't really brag about it. It keeps the crowds down and the crazy prices away. Nobody's really picked up on that Pittsburgh in the last four or five years has become a great place to live. It's had its struggles over the decades, just like every place else in the Rust Belt. But Pittsburgh, in my opinion, I think they're recovering better than most places in the area. Recovering better than most of the cities in this part of the country. The city has a good tech scene going on right now, and it's not a bad place to live. Like I said, you go see a Steelers game, Penguins game, Pirates game. Wherever you are in Pittsburgh, you're not too far away from being outdoors in some really nice recreation type areas. The real problem with Pittsburgh is if you don't like bridges, kind of stay away. They got more bridges than Venice, Italy, honestly. Pittsburgh is a major city in the United States, and unlike a lot of other major cities, you don't have to pay buckets of cash for rent or to buy a house. I had mentioned people are moving to Pittsburgh in a video probably about three weeks ago, and the next day I got a message from a friend here in the Portland area. She's actually in Washington, but she works in Portland. She said she's been looking at houses in Pittsburgh and has plans to move by the end of 2024 because she can't afford anything out west. Currently, Pittsburgh has 2,039 active listings. That's just in the city, not the metro area. They have about 314 active listings that are under $100,000. And through 2023, the percentage of listings under $100,000 was 15.4%. Number six, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee is sort of like Pittsburgh in one sense. Living in Milwaukee is like being in a secret club where the password is always going to be something to do with cheese and beer. Matter of fact, if you go to a Brewers game, which is their Major League Baseball team, which is Brewers like beer, one of the players gets a home run, they stuff a cheese head hat on him. I think they stopped that, but they did it for a while. After a Brewers game and eating a bunch of cheese, you can take a stroll in Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful city. It is sadly the only place in Wisconsin that has any legit crime. And I think that plays a part in why it's so affordable to live here. Actually, that's one of the main reasons housing is so cheap in Milwaukee. There are cities in the U.S. that are far more dangerous than Milwaukee. It just looks really bad when you compare it to the rest of Wisconsin. If you do move to Milwaukee or you're thinking about it, make sure you check and see what neighborhoods you should really avoid. But if you want to give your wallet a breather, move to Milwaukee. It's a good life. Currently, they have 644 active listings, and currently 53 are under the price tag of $100,000. The percentage of listings under $100,000 throughout 2023 was 23.76%. Honestly, some of the houses they have listed for under $100,000 right now in Milwaukee are not bad. They're like ready to go. Maybe need a new coat of paint. Number five, St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri is a very difficult city to explain. It is thick with history. I mean, most of the Western United States and its settlers came through St. Louis. 
It's got a lot of cultural heritage. And then it became one of the more dangerous cities in the United States for a while there. It's getting better. It's getting a lot better, actually. They do have some rough areas that you should probably avoid at all costs, but it's affordable. They've been going through this whole revitalization thing to attract new residents. Where they are picking up some new people and people have started to move there, it hasn't reversed the flow of people going out. Since the 1950s, St. Louis has lost population. And up until 2010, it was always in double digits. 2020 got all the way down to 5.5% reduction in their population. So it has slowed down, but they are definitely still losing. That's good news for anyone that wants to buy an affordable house. Because if people are leaving, that means there's fewer people buying. And if nobody's buying, prices go down. In my opinion, I think St. Louis has kind of hit the bottom of their people leaving. And I think by the next census, they might actually gain again. The local governments put a lot of effort into bringing in new business. This means more jobs and hopefully it means more people. I think they're getting towards the end of their decline and they're getting ready to come back up as far as population growth goes. I think the 2020 census was the last time we're going to see St. Louis lose population in a census. Currently, the St. Louis area has about 2,060 active listings with about 530 below the $100,000 mark. Throughout 2023, 25.73% of the listings were under $100,000. Number four, Rochester, New York. We seem to be talking about Rochester a lot lately. I just talked about it the other day. Rochester is in upstate New York, and it is kind of unique. It is both a lake and a river town. It sits on both Lake Ontario and the Genesee River. I had one guy tell me it's not in upstate not too long ago. He said it was in western New York. It is in western New York. It's in the western part of upstate New York. New Yorkers, let me know in the comment section below. Have you ever considered Rochester not in upstate New York? Makes no sense to me. Rochester definitely falls in the affordable category. This affordability can be attributed to a variety of factors, including the city's economic transition from its historical roots in manufacturing to its more diverse economy centered around education, healthcare, and technology. Data rooms are big in this part of the country right now. Despite its economic shift, the real estate market has remained accessible and kind of avoided a lot of those peaks and valleys the real estate market has seen in the last few years. Again, if you're thinking about retiring in Rochester, you gotta know, it gets pretty snowy and it gets pretty cold in the winter. Other than that, it's a great place to live. Summers and spring are great. It's got some mosquitoes like every place else. Where there's water, where there's people, there are mosquitoes. Rochester's got a lot of water. The total active listings in Rochester is 253. Active listings under $100,000 is 107. In 2023, the percentage of listings under 100,000 averaged 42.29%. Number three, Cleveland, Ohio. Down Interstate 90 a ways on the shore of Lake Erie, you find Cleveland, Ohio. This also is a river and a lake town. It's got Lake Erie right there, and the Cuyahoga River flows right through town, which famously caught fire one time in the 1970s. Not the docks, not the boats on the river. The entire river caught fire. Like the water caught fire, it was so polluted. It's stories like that that help drive down the real estate prices and the cost of living in Cleveland. The good news is, I think they've turned the corner in recent years a little bit. They've gotten so affordable, a lot of remote workers are moving to Cleveland. Cleveland still has some downright scary neighborhoods that you should avoid, but they do have some areas that are very affordable and coming up. Cleveland experienced significant population decline from its peak in the mid-20th century. This has led to a surplus of housing and subsequent stabilization of the real estate prices. This is a city that once relied heavily on manufacturing. In recent years, it's kind of branched out. It has different industries coming to Cleveland, but they still face a lot of challenges. Downtown Cleveland is looking a lot better these days. They're starting from downtown and they're branching out to some of the neighborhoods. Honestly, think if you really want to get into some property and hold on to it for a while, Cleveland might be a good option. Currently, there are 1,171 listings in the Cleveland area. Active listings under 100,000, 518. The percentage of listings under 100,000 last year averaged 44.24%. Number two, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Tulsa, Oklahoma is one of those cities that's putting a lot of effort into getting new people and new industries. I've done sponsored videos for this website called makemymove.com. They always have things for Tulsa. They branched out to getting jobs for nurses, not just tech people anymore. This isn't a sponsored ad. I was just on Twitter talking back and forth with my contact there. So it just goes to show you that they're trying to get people in there. Tulsa's been in a rough patch for quite a few years, and I think they're another city that's kind of turned the corner. The biggest problem with Tulsa, though, is it's kind of boring. A lot of people that have moved there, a lot of people that live there, say it's just kind of dull. I don't know. They do get tornadoes, and if you're looking to spice up your life, (laughs) a near miss with a tornado will do it. Total active listings in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now are 1,119. Active listings under $100,000, 73. Last year, on average, 6.52% of their listings were under $100,000. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link for that down below in the description area. Love it if you went over there and subscribe. All right, on to number one. And number one. Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm sure a lot of you are a little shocked. Indianapolis doesn't have the greatest reputation right now, but I still think it's better off than Cleveland. But what we're really looking at here is the affordability, and Indianapolis, for being a major city, is very affordable. Living in Indianapolis, Indiana offers a blend of urban and suburban life, striking a balance that appeals to a lot of people. It's known for its welcoming communities, vibrant art scene, and a plethora of green spaces. They're kind of big on parks and green spaces. This city sort of has something for everyone. What makes it really attractive, though, is the affordability. Cost of living is really low, and real estate is even lower. The economy in Indianapolis has been growing. No real big booms or any jumps. It's just steadily chugging along. Since it hasn't become a boom town in, you know, recent decades, that helps keep costs below the national average. Currently, Indianapolis has 2,636 active listings. Of those, 128 are under $100,000. And in 2023, the percentage of listings under $100,000 averaged 4.86%. All right, that's today's video. Be nice to each other.